Welcome back to Nightly Nonsense. Hey, I want to pick up on this kind of theme of uh, getting ready for a new year, entering a new year. What are some things that we can do? Last time we talked about being an encouragement. I want to continue in the same chapter and encourage you, right? So uh, chapter 35, Second Chronicles. Let me read a little section of scripture to you. It says, Josiah kept a Passover to the Lord in Jerusalem, and they slaughtered the Passover lamb on the 14th day of the first month. He anointed the priests in their offices, and he encouraged them in the service of the house of the Lord. And he said to the Levites, who taught all Israel and who were holy to the Lord, put the holy ark in the house that Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, built. You need not carry it on your shoulders. Now serve the Lord your God and his people Israel. Serve the Lord your God and his people Israel. Prepare yourselves according to your father's houses by your divisions as prescribed in the writing of David king of, in the groupings of the fathers of Israel. Sorry, in the document of Solomon his son. Stand in the holy place according to the groupings of the fathers of your brothers, the lay people, and according to the division of the Levites by father's household. Slaughter the Passover lamb. Consecrate yourselves. Prepare for your brothers. Do according to to the word of the Lord of Moses. You see, what is it that Josiah really encouraged these Levites to do? He encouraged them to be, and then, and then you're going to be able to do out of this, right? He encouraged them to serve, right? He encouraged them to prepare. He encouraged them to be in the right place, stand in the holy place, right? But at the very end of this, he encourages, he encourages them to prepare, right? Prepare for your brothers according to the word of the Lord of Moses. Consecrate yourselves, right? And prepare yourselves. I'm going to talk about that this year, uh, a whole bunch probably, right? But I pray that this year is a consecrated and preparational year for you. I pray that as you go out every single day, that you will take these two words and that you will use these two words as the foundation for serving other people. First of all, consecrate yourself. Set yourself all apart for God. Man, imagine if every day, every day you and I committed to setting ourselves for the purpose, the plans, whatever God wants. I'm going to consecrate myself. I am going to set myself apart. Be holy. That doesn't mean that every morning you get up and do 25 minutes of devotions and 10 minutes of prayer. And It means you get up and ask God, what? what do I need to do today to be set apart from you? And maybe God says, could you just spend 20 minutes praying with me, 5 minutes praying with me? Maybe God does lead you to some scriptures. Hey, Andy, you got, you got to focus on this today. I got a scripture, I got a word for you that's going to help you, right? But we set ourselves apart for God. We recognize, I want to be godly. I want to do things differently. I want to be differently. So I'm going to look differently. I'm going to act differently. I'm going to say things differently. I'm going to be different. Man, that is a scary, scary thing. You want to make some sense out of the nonsense all around you? Purpose in your heart to be different. Be different from everyone else. Man, everything in us wants to be the same. Everything in us wants people to be applauding us. Well done. But the truth is, if you're doing godly things, there's a good chance people aren't going to applaud you for that. They didn't applaud Jesus. They didn't applaud Jesus for, for being different. The second he wasn't who they wanted him to be, they loved the miracles, they loved the food, they loved the teaching. But then he decided he wasn't going to walk into Jerusalem and overtake the Romans and, and, and become a dictator himself. They, they don't want really much to do with him. So they were able to yell crucify him to a man that they had been following and liking and wanting the things of him for three years. So we, we want to be holy. We want to be set apart. Do you want to be holy? Do you want to be set apart today? You want to be like everybody else. I just want to fit in at work. I want to go to work. I want people to like me. I, I, I want an easy life. Everything about Jesus 
says that not only do you consecrate yourself to him, but you prepare yourself for not an easy life. Prepare yourself for different, right? That's that's the, the motto, one of the mottos of the chosen, uh, you know, series that's been out there that people love, I love. Right? Said, prepare yourself for different. Be different. How do you do that? You set yourself apart in the morning so then you can prepare yourself. Now, what does that mean? Well, that does mean, hey, I'm going to read the scriptures. I'm going to put into practice the things that God says I need to. I'm going to practice being a Christian. I'm going to love people differently, forgive people differently. <clears throat> I'm going to ask for forgiveness when I need that. I'm going to take accountability. I'm going to take ownership and responsibility. At the same time, I'm going to give mercy out and grace out and compassion out. I'm going to be like Jesus. I'm going to be like Jesus. we got to prepare to be like Jesus. And that's what Josiah is encouraging people to do. Are, are you doing that? Are you punishing people when they try to be different? Or are you encouraging them? Do life according to Jesus. Be different. But are you also encouraging people to prepare to be different? Hey, you got to think differently. you got to act differently. That doesn't come by accident. That comes by opportunity. How many times do we, do we get excited about Jesus and say, Ah, oh, I want to be different. And then we go to the store. He gives us an opportunity. And we're just like everybody else in the line. They could show no difference. When you're waiting in a Christmas line that's 30 people long, do people know that you're different? Or are they hearing the same complaints? Are they hearing the same, you know, problems, right? Are they hearing the same, why don't they have more cashiers? Are hearing the same, you know, like, hey, I've been waiting in this line forever. Are they hearing the same, I have other places to be? What are, what are they hearing? Complaints, grumbling. Or are they hearing nothing because you're being silent? Well, funny, we were at a Golden Corral uh, probably a few months ago, and uh, we were waiting in this long line, and we were outside the building and started hearing from people waiting in line inside the building, the Bills love chant song, right? The Bills make me want to shout, and it's crazy how contagious this was. All of a sudden, people in line were singing. They were complaining about how long it was. Nope, they were, they were singing and they were having fun. That's, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Taking those tough moments, those hard moments, those long moments, and having some fun with them, being different in nature. Do you use your time while you're waiting for cashiers? Well, do you, do you ask the person in front of them how you can pray for them, who they are? What, do you think it's by accident that you're in line where you are? encourage those around encourage i know that we're not supposed to pay attention and and we don't want to do all these things that make people be offended and stuff but did you ever consider that maybe being different means god has a purpose for you being in line god has a purpose for you waiting on hold and god has a person rather than yelling right and screaming and hollering and complaining while you're waiting on line and, and on hold for people do you ever think about praying for the person that you're talking to just just praying. Like God just puts you in connect with somebody and all you're doing is complaining about the connect. What if what if you actually started praying for the connection? What if you prayed before you called about the connection? Right? Listen, th there's lots of ways we could go on this. I just want you to see that Josiah encouraged and then he encouraged in specific ways. Consecrate yourself, prepare yourself for what you're about to do. I hope that you wake up every morning, set yourself apart for God, and then allow him to prepare you for that which you have. Right? What is it that you have for me today? God, how can I prepare for that? So chew on that for a little bit as we start off this new year and as we get excited about what God has in 2023, right? Setting ourselves apart, preparing for what God has for us. That's important. We'll see you next time. Nightly Nonsense.